Hi everyone, this is Adam. In this video, we're going to start to work on this visualization page. However, what I actually mean is we're going to start setting up the data so that we can visualize it. To do that, we're going to create another sheet. So we have an admin area, we got a profile database, we got a testing database, and we have this um, dashboard, which right now is called player profile, and we'll call this testing, testing dashboard. And this sheet 35 that we just created, we're going to call this, um, I'm just going to call it chart data. I don't really know what to call it, but this is where all of our data sets or our aggregated data sets reside that drive our visualization. So the first thing, I'm going to call this top area, I'm going to call it testing dashboard so that we know that all this stuff around here relates to the testing dashboard and the interactions that we select within that. And I'm just going to get some baseline information that we need to do our calculations correctly. We'll say the selected player, which is the player that we selected. We'll say position, because we'll probably need their position. To do some calculations what else well to start we can just have have their team and there are going to be some other things that we add to this as we figure out or as we go through what we're building so i'm going to bold this testing dashboard area and i'm just going to kind of make this dark gray and bold selected player position and team and now what we need to do is we need to bring in the information that we select essentially so for selected player, we'll go equals, we'll go to our testing dashboard, and click on cell A3, which is the dropdown for the player we select, and click enter. So now we know that we've selected this player. And if we go to our testing dashboard and change to someone else, go back to our chart data, now we know that we've selected a different player. This is not necessary. But it can be helpful when you're doing calculations on this sheet so you don't have to go back and forth to your testing dashboard, back to here. It's easier to just bring the information across. Now, one of the challenges with what we did prior with making our player profile dynamic where we can choose shoots, position, we can choose stuff from our profile page to display here, is that none of we can't rely on any of this information for our calculations. For example, if we wanted to get the average for the team that this player is on, we cannot use this cell that says Monstars to get an average for that team because we can change their current team here to say current age. And now we're looking at a cell that is no longer the player's team. So that's one of the challenges with making profile information dynamic. But because we've done that, we're going to still need to bring in or get that information somehow. And to do that, we're going to write some equations in this sheet. We're going to use index and match, just like we've done before. So for the position, we'll go equals index, open parenthesis, go to the profiles area, and select position. And we've already done this a couple of times, so I'm going to go pretty fast. Comma, match, open parenthesis. So we want the position when the chart data, when the player that we selected, comma is equal to and let's look up the player name here go comma zero close the parentheses so we're getting the position in the row of this name list that is equal to the player that we selected in our visualization and click enter and now let's just lock all this stuff in lock in the b's lock in the A and the 4, and lock in the A's, and copy this and paste it to team. But now instead of looking at B to B in our profiles, which is where the position resides, let's find out where the team resides, which is F. So we want their current team. And let's go F to F and click Enter. So now we have information about the player that we selected. And the first thing that I want to visualize here, let's go to our testing dashboard, is I want an area where I can select an event, whether it's a training camp or an in-season session, and see how this player compares to themselves, to the position group, to the team, for that event. 
So to do that, I'm going to want to pick an event to focus on. And to do that, I need a list of all of the events for this player or where this player is in the database. To do that, we're going to write an equation in our chart there in our chart data area to get a list of those events. And like I said in the prior video, or the video with the admin area, we're going to be using sort, unique, filter, all those things together. And this is one of the occasions where we're going to do that. So you can kind of see how as I go through these videos, we start more simple and we're going to continue to iterate and get more complex with our formulas. I did this consciously so that you could build up your skills and familiarity with formulas before going right into really, really difficult things. So to get that list, we're going to use sort, unique, and filter. But let's start with unique. So we go equals unique, open parenthesis. Now we want a unique list of dates and testing events. So let's go to our testing data. And, huh, the dates are over here, the testing events are over here. Uh, what do we do? Well, we can use curly brackets. That's how you get multiple columns into these formulas when the columns are not next to one another. So we're going to do an open curly bracket, select column B, comma, which distinguishes one column from another when inside these curly brackets, and H. And we'll close the curly bracket and close um, the, <laughs> the, the parentheses and click Enter. Awesome, now we have a list of our dates and events. That's great, it's a great start. We're almost where we need to be. And the reason why we're not where we need to be is because this list is not sorted and it does not take into consideration the player that we select. And yeah, this list is sorted for now, but what we can do in our testing data is we could, let's say we sort this list um, the other way. I'm just going to sort it the other way. Or actually, yeah, that, that's fine. If we go back to our chart data, now what just happened? Well, yeah, now it's sorted the other way and things are kind of all, all messed up, right? So let's figure this out. So let's first go to this testing data and undo the sort that we just did, or let's just go back to normal. And now let's add some other stuff here in our chart data. So we have this unique function, but let's first add a sort. So let's sort, open parenthesis, all this unique stuff. And we're going to sort this, comma, because we have more than one column, by column one, which is the dates. Because we can't sort by this text field or because it doesn't really mean anything. I mean, if you did sort it by the text field, you'll get all the in seasons followed by all the training camps. And that's fine, but it doesn't really understand uh, the date. So we're sorting by date is ascending. That is false. We want it to be descending if we want it to be most recent to least recent. And that's how I want it to be, so that's how I want it to be. And we'll close the parentheses and click enter. And now we do. We have a nicer list from most recent to least recent. But we also have not accommodated for the athlete. So if, for example, this athlete this will bring it back all the sessions. Let's say that, that this athlete left our team on 11-5-2019. We would still get all of these sessions coming back, even though the athlete wasn't around for those sessions. And we want to just pick from the sessions that the athlete that we're interested in was a part of. So to do that, inside this unique, again, we're going to do the filter. So let's filter, open parenthesis. Keep everything the same, except after this last curly bracket where we denote our range, comma, we're going to add a condition. And that condition is when, let's go to our testing data, column A to A, or the player name, is equal to, go back to our chart data, 
the player that we select. Comma. Another condition, and also we don't want any blanks to come back. So and also when we'll go the testing data A to A is less than greater than, which is not equal to, and quote quote, which is blank. And click enter. Notice now that the headers don't show up because those header rows, the date and the event ID, are not in the same row that the player name is in, so they're no longer relevant, and we're not going to have any blanks. We don't know if we had them before, but we won't now. And we can just rename the columns, let's call this date, and I'll just call it event ID because I don't know what else to call it, and we'll make them bold. And we will start the first part of our visualization in this video. Let's go to our testing dashboard and let's do, I don't know, FGH and merge those together. And we'll create a drop down list of our sessions that we have for this player. So we go to data, data validation. We've done this before. We'll reject input if it's not one of the things in our list so that there are no errors. List from a range. What do we want to pick from? Let's click on this select data from a range or select a data range we go to our chart data and we'll select d4 colon d so we'll get a list of this session all the way down to the bottom of our of our uh, table here or uh, bottom of our page click ok and click save and go to our testing dashboard let's color this gold and maybe the font is, is white and now, here are all the sessions for that player, and we can select one. Maybe we'll format this a little bit, put it vertically aligned, center aligned, bold it, and make it a little bit bigger for now. So now we select a player and we select a session. And the next things that we need to do are to have data appear for this player for that session. And in the following videos, we're going to go through building this out. But before we move on, let's go to back to our chart data. And now let's add in, let's say selected, selected session. And we'll bold that and we'll say equals beneath it, equals, and go to our testing dashboard, this in the drop down, and click enter. So now we also know what session was selected. And that's important because we're going to use that when we do our aggregations in the next video. So I hope that this was helpful. Please don't hesitate to let me know if you have any questions. And I think that this is a good time in this series for you to comment below with any questions, any major questions that you have as, as you've worked through this process so far, and any issues that you're running into, so that I and others in our community can do our best to, to help you achieve your goals. So if you have any questions or important things that you're not able to get your head around or that are bugging you with this framework, please leave a comment below. And if not, or even if so, please make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you found the content beneficial. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.